Hi everyone. So today we have three engineers from Qualcomm, and uh, today we will be de- doing lot of discussion about companies like Qualcomm and how to get into them and many other things. It is going to be interesting. So let let them introduce themselves. Hello everybody. My name is Pradeep Kumar. I am working in Qualcomm as a software engineer, and I have been I've I've done my gate exam in 2020, where I scored all in all India rank of 839. From there, uh, in from the college, I got placed in Qualcomm, and I am working in data modem team, and there I work on uh, various networking projects. And I my language which I use is C plus plus. So it I'm very fortunate to meet sir, and he taught me all the gate stuff and all. and he was an inspiration from the 2020 i want to meet him after cracking the gate but since covid happened and after 3 years i am getting again the chance to meet so thank you so much for giving this opportunity okay hi uh, my name is tanishi and uh, i did mtech from tripit delhi and got placed in ibm i did my internship for 6 months in ibm isgl and uh, then i joined uh, qualcomm off campus and uh, i am working on the automation side and validating the chipsets hello everyone and uh, i am shivank and i started my uh, computer science degree from a sanskrit university and from there i got inspired from a sir's videos like uh, on gate so from there i got inspiration to write gate so from there i started writing gate and then uh, i scored uh, uh, like i got air 1985 uh in gate and then from there i got placed in triple it delhi and then uh, i stepped pursued there ma- my masters there and then uh, from there i got placed in qualcomm so currently i'm working in uh, gpu vulcan team and uh, my tech stack is around c++ and uh, some side scripting so uh, now that guys you are from qualcomm so what are the companies that are in the same niche like in the same sector what are the companies that there are so uh, i think for example uh, qualcomm is in the semiconductor industry so there are various companies like amd nvidia and then mediatek, MediaTek. these companies are there and uh, regarding qualcomm like how we got placed so we uh, the test was different like interviews was obviously different for everyone but the test was common so there were a questions from the various core computer science subjects like output based question and uh, network questions operating system questions and they test you on this core fundamentals and and there was one coding uh, question for as well like the logic building and regarding that questions was there this was the first round after that in interviews they were asking about from the resume <coughs> and uh, testing on that okay. this was the process so even i i had an offer from qualcomm long back it mm-hmm. was in 2010 so i had an offer but i didn't join qualcomm but in the offer letter they have given lot of benefits what are the benefits that they have now you want to go yeah so uh, currently uh, what we experience is like we get uh, free food in qualcomm like breakfast and lunch are like free for us okay and uh, apart from this uh, we get like uh, many times we uh, in the month we get team outings and also the work culture is like it's not too hectic as compared to other companies like we can join on our own like flexibility over the work hours and like the general things are always there like these insurance and all like health insurance for all over the company is there like all over the family is there <laughs> so these are the some of the benefits uh, apart from this we get like when we join we get uh, joining bonus every joining bonus joining bonus, joining bonus, joining bonus, bonus and then and relocation, relocation yeah. and, all. and inside the qualcomm we also have the gym and yeah. uh, the sports area the gaming room also like we can reimburse our phone bill if that yeah. is yeah yeah power. phone bill re- reimbursement yeah. was phone there phone bill wifi I reimbursement think books also for books also they yeah. are giving yeah, so, so recently yeah. i did my lasik i got a power of 5.5 Okay. So I did my LASIK in Hyderabad only. So that also got reimbursed. Like eighty percent of the amount got reimbursed. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there are lots of perks if you talk about like in sorts of health, in sorts of like uh, daily activities like gym and other like health activities. So yeah, they got they get they are very focused on employees' well being. So uh, also one more thing I want to add here. So in uh, every year we have four Fridays off. So these four Fridays are just given. It's called Qualcomm holidays. So you can combine it and make a holiday out of it. So that's why they give every quarter they give Friday Friday off. So you are. It, it seems that you are loving working at Qualcomm. Ah, <laughs> yeah. uh, the work culture is very work good, and the well. benefits like the perks are also good. Yeah, that's the. So you can come and leave anytime. Yeah.
Yeah, okay. and there even are... that improves our productivity because, like, okay. uh, like it's been uh, told several times, like there is some productive time. Everybody ha- is having their own productive uh-huh. time. Let's say somebody okay. works well in that 10 p.m. to 12 p.m. Right. Hmm. So yeah, that flexibility is to on us. So we we can do that. We can enjoy that flexibility. I want to add in that. So on every floor there are uh, sleeping rooms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> so we have like four beds and those couches. So you can go and sleep there. So uh, tell me, how did you prepare for the interviews, especially for Qualcomm? So uh, as like most of these colleges have, they have a alumni network mm. who have been in these companies. So they kind of document a proper kind of a worksheet. Like they have multi like 200 to 300 questions. They like maintain a, a kind of archive for that. So uh, we used to do that archive for every specific company. They have maintained an archive. Mm. So there are some specific questions for Qualcomm as well, like mostly on microprocessors, the architecture and this little Indian, big Indian, those uh, complex uh, good uh, questions, which we for gate students. Uh, this is the like ideal interview. <laughs> OK, yeah. Okay. So yeah. if I talk about the interview process, so it is uh, more likely uh, biased to low level programming like they ask question about like bitwise operations and uh, how we can like the details of this C language like I got a question like to implement size of operator uh, that is like there in the C we need I need to implement it using some pointer so like they move mostly for because C, they deal with the hardware things mostly low level things so that's why uh, their focus is also on like understanding of these uh, pointers and uh, low level technologies like uh, let's say memory management so yeah apart from this uh, like uh, these uh, core subjects like uh, operating system and computer networks and uh, this uh, what we call dsa mm-hmm. so for if i talk about dsa so medium level dsa is required there is not like they are going to give you a very huge uh, dynamic programming problem mm-hmm. so yeah if you are not very fond of doing uh, a core dsa thing even then you can get a very good package if you are having uh, like you are excelling in these fields like of um, like bitwise operations and all like low level things yeah, yeah. so yeah that is like most important topic uh, everybody was not good at it so okay. we kind of prepare for 10 days specifically focusing on these operations bitwise thing so uh, tell me about uh, is the language important for a particular language is important for qualcomm or they they can ask you to write the uh, code in any language you like yeah actually like it's a embedded uh, company so hmm. it basically focus on c c plus plus hmm. but there are positions which focus like uh, on python also python so basically my interview was i i was not knowing about like c c plus plus my manager when they were interviewing they're like you don't know the basics of pointers only <laughs> so i was like i can i have done it in my btech first year but uh, like uh, it has been five years and i don't know <laughs> i don't remember but i can like I can uh, learn it if it's needed. So basically, they were looking for the automation perspective. So they took uh, my interview on Python. Okay. So mm. NumPy, Pandas. So they ask questions related to that. I write the code on that. And in Qualcomm, they are not uh, like they are not restricted. Like uh, they are not asking coding on a hard question so they just test your basic knowledge like uh, you are uh, like okay with the low level questions and like low language like uh, i remember they asked me like um, different types of sortings and searching and uh, the best way to search and uh, to solve so okay. they basically see your uh, potential how much you are seriously willing to join the company mm. or not so to add on matter. this like i have seen people i i talk to them like who already got placed so it depends on team to team for example if somebody is coming to my team he will be digged on the linux fundamentals okay. everything you should right. be knowing about uh, how this uh, architecture works and networking stack and entire seven layers they want to dig deeper what happens your video what happens <laughs> then everything goes so so guys, uh, have you done any internships earlier? Like, uh, is it required to get into Qualcomm or any other company? What you feel? You, you can say what you feel it is. Okay. okay. So for me, like regarding the internship part, I did my internship in Indian Railways. 
so there is a central railway information system like they build websites and railway information system mm. so for example i work on a project unreserved ticketing system mm. so there is for example they were digitalizing the general ticketing system mm -hmm. so they were applying these distance formulas because you can't book ticket uh, when tt is coming towards you so they want to block those coordinates and all so i was working on that part so i worked did my internship for 2 3 months there but uh, i don't think ki uh, in coming to qualcom uh, any internship matter whenever you are coming as a fresher from a college so from college they hire you based on these uh, fundamentals which we have discussed so guys uh, many people think that if they have very low cgpa they might not get a job into crowd based companies like qualcom so what did you observe is cpa is cgpa really important or uh, how how important is it for Qualcomm. So, if you are coming through on campus, so yeah, to some extent it matters. Like what I what I, uh, like at least uh, we feel that yeah, it matters. Like they go for some sort of let's say eight or seven point five is the mm. like the threshold. So yeah, it matters a little. And uh, yeah, apart from that, uh, I think uh, yeah, if you are coming from off campus, so if you are having that experience, that capability, then I think it. It won't matter much, but yeah, if you if you are coming from on campus, it has a little meaning because based on that, because let's say we are having two hundred students and you have to take interview of only fifty, so apart from that, uh, the coding exam and all, they have some sort of uh, restriction. So yeah. So what was your final year project like uh, in B Tech and M Tech? What mm. was what were your projects and did it help you in uh, getting a job? See, we don't know where we are going, right? So, like, let's say, uh, in which company we are going to place. So, we do project on on our interest, like what interests us, what actually intrudes us. So, yeah, I done projects in uh, like in B Tech. I done projects in uh, some neural based uh, like crop uh, crop disease detection. And then uh, in M Tech, I done like lots of projects. It was mostly like project thing only. So, I did we together made developed a three D. Uh, uh, first person shooter game there in Unreal mm -hmm. Engine. We uh, worked on this instance based in his return. Uh, apart from that, uh, since mainly uh, like nowadays colleges focuses on these AI things, so we also done several AI projects like let's say instance based image retrieval. You got some instance of the image and then uh, you f f you want to find out some similar images related to that. So these mm -hmm. projects we did at that. So uh, my question is generally people uh, keep on switching the companies because whenever they switch a company, they are going to get at least no, some 20, 50 percent hike some, right. sometimes mm -hmm. in broad based mm -hmm. companies. But when I talk to you, you seem to be very passionate and you, you, you seem to love Qualcomm a lot. So you are not planning for any job switch in order to get the hike. Are. Yeah, yeah. So uh, regarding that, uh, everyone wants to switch, but uh, it's more about like the reason why to switch. For example, for uh, salary, many people yeah. will choose yeah, for many. salary. Yes, yes. So salary wise, like uh, obviously there is a hike if you go in another company. Obviously, it will be fifty percent more amount of money, but uh, it's more of like a uh, to be honest, uh, interest. First of all, I am getting interested in this field. That's why I don't feel that ke, uh, I need to switch my direction first of all salary wise it will be fine like every year we get some hike but uh, when you see like the work is most important right work mm. is not just work it's your life mm. okay so when your work is good and you are enjoying it so maybe you should pursue little bit more uh, and little bit ignore that money part if you're not interested then you might first of all work is important then money comes so my preference is like I, I get a good amount of salary right now even in Qualcomm. So yeah, if you are uh, settled with some uh, like handsome amount, then uh, yeah, you can follow your passion mainly because if you have given I think two or three years in that field, right. then you will become a, like you will get a, get to learn a lot there, right? And if you hmm. keep on switching the companies, you are not going to like in every company there is some different tech stack. Even even we don't know. You will not become master at yeah. anything. So hmm. you won't become master, and eventually uh, it won't work in long term. But if you are having some like deep understanding of some technology, then it is going to help. Like let's say after investing your three years, you go for a switch, you can uh, like get a better hike rather than switching every year. So this is what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. I have one contrast question here. So does that <coughs> one crore package uh, news hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> which which <laughs> one crore package? For example, some guy yeah. got one. Some guy guy package. got. Acha, so these days it is all over that. internet, right? <laughs> so <laughs> in internet, people will say I have one crore package. Man. So, 
ऑडी सो दैट एक्चुअली लाइक डिपेंड्स इफ यू लाइक गेट अ चांस टू गो अब्रॉड लाइक मोस्टली इन अब्रॉड ओनली इफ यू आर इफ यू टॉक अबाउट एंट्री लेवल जॉब्स so yeah one yeah second. that's true you know uh, generally what happens is uh, an iit and uh, get say 1 crore or 2 crore ka package mm-hmm. and people think that that is an indian job but actually right. that's not an indian job that mm-hmm. is american job and in fact only if he goes to us only if the company takes him to us company will pay otherwise his salary actual salary in india will be 25 lakhs Mm. but right. but that will not be shown he don't want Pe- to say uh, that truth yeah yeah, yeah. In the but, field, start term. but people say that right so right. one crore so th- these things happen and uh, uh, yeah so if you if you are happy with your work i think you should not look at your uh, packages and all hmm. if you are happy right. with your work yeah my perspective is different like uh, just take experience for 2 to 3 years then switch it's mm. like you are uh, increasing your knowledge you are like getting more perspective of the other tech skills if you stay for one job one stay it's like you are you're going in deep but it's uh, you can also lag behind the tech which is going in the market so okay switch but with an experience yeah yeah so so what is your perspective on this yeah. like uh, how should yeah how you should, should you should focus mainly on becoming master at something Hmm, then eventually right. you will get that amount hmm, instead right. of switching too many times if you are really a master at one thing then obviously your salary will increase in the same company also but then if you are switching try to switch in a position where your knowledge that you have gained so far is also relevant. going to be helpful it mm-hmm. is going to be relevant for example in your case if you are working on c c++ and then if you directly go to a startup where the let us say mm-hmm. it is on react mm-hmm. then uh-huh, then it, it is come you are again starting from scratch yeah, starting mm-hmm. and again it will take you 10 years to become a master mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so right. switching should be according to your domain mm-hmm. i feel mm-hmm. but mainly people are doing it for salary so <laughs> we cannot blame them i mean that is instant gratification yeah so. even i feel yeah if you're not satisfied at that time like let's say you are getting a very low salary it's good to switch but at the time when you feel okay i'm very much like settled now i can have a good salary and good life then life standards mm-hmm. then i think uh, it's better to stay for some time so now that you are working in qualcomm and all of you have mtech degrees from triple uh, it delhi so and then you might have seen some people in qualcomm who are also working at your same level maybe with the same pay but they might not be having mtech degrees they might be from btech colleges mm, right. so now tell me uh, with this this thing in mind is mtech really relevant these days is mtech really important yeah so i want to go first on this so for example uh, so my perspective is k mtech is not uh, it should be the last option not the first option if you are doing your btech if you are starting your btech out so it should be the last option for example if you are not getting placements anywhere or you are like so you were idle yeah, at home yes then you should uh, start preparing for <laughs> it is for better than MTech. sitting idle at home yes yes yeah. then you start preparing for mtech but in the 4 years right now the resources are so much they are cheaper and you can easily so so find, my question yeah. is why did you choose uh, mtech not ms why people if they go to us mm. they earn in crores yes that is very it is a normal thing there so 1 crore is minimum they earn right and now you are doing masters and you are not earning that much yes so why did you choose mtech and why not ms uh, so it's more about the exposure so there is no one in my family or neighbors or in my like domain who have done like go- gone outside and uh, apart from that the financials thing so i thought ke when you are taking a loan you have to put collaterals and all you have to rent out your home or <laughs> give papers of your home i have seen in movies and all so i thought ke it will be very tedious and very hectic for my parents so i didn't i want to go with a, a le- less cheaper option so now the question is is mtech required or not so <laughs> So uh, yeah you you can yeah. give a better perspective yeah actually like uh, it depends upon the person if if i talk about myself i love to study like i want to go in the research part and i want to learn more things see, see, for research and for phd's mm-hmm. mtech is definitely required yeah. but now that you are in qualcomm yeah is it is right. it required or for qualcomm it's not so much required if someone is willing to like uh, if he is from the third tier college okay. and he wants some like uh, 
exposure like so to get placements yeah, it is to get right. placements in third uh, tier also we get placements but the basically like uh, the su- um, yeah in service space company we mostly get and for the good uh, like if we talk about the mang and uh, qualcom type of company so basically so, if qualcom would have come in your btech yeah it is simple you, you yeah. wouldn't have joined mtech no, uh, no way <laughs> yeah it's also yeah, yeah. 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 We, if we are getting a have. chance in our btech to <laughs> yeah. join qualcom uh no nobody will prefer for going mtech but uh, yeah. so basically mtech is to get better placement yes, better placement yeah so better exposure of companies. companies are coming to top college so, so that is the main reason you have mentioned it is line. not about learning it's yes. about video, learning also one of your video you mentioned this line if companies are not coming to you go to those college where companies are coming <laughs> <laughs> okay so, yeah. so jobs is the main reason that you joined yes. learning was also uh, the reason without learning we cannot go but yeah, yeah the main you, reason- you are forced to learn Yes. <laughs> some to some extent the force to but we really enjoy also learning <laughs> yeah but okay enjoyed it okay yeah, yeah. Okay. i remember yeah. my parents uh, when i was in btech i got placed in tech system there i was getting 7 lakh oh. so my parents were you have two options either do gate either choose that uh, job so i was like uh, my parents my dad suggested me like if you love higher studies if you wanted to learn more i have seen you you want more exposure in ai machine learning in btech also i was like uh, confused which uh, which technology have to choose ai mm-hmm. machine learning mm-hmm. are there cloud computing blockchain everything was there so what i have to choose so to get the more exposure i chose uh, doing mtech rather than going doing a job So like I, I, want to, do. I want to add on this. When I was I was preparing for GATE, so I have to spend a lot of time on uh, like these subjects, core computer science subjects. In that specific time, my peers were preparing for this coding. They were very active on code forces, code chef, lead code. They were very active. Like they were spending like twelve hours on that, and mm. I was spending the same amount of time on these skills. It so, was after B Tech or during B Tech? During the B Tech only. Oh, so okay. I did. Uh, so you wasted your time. Huh? I feel that I feel that coding you might could have, have been more coding. improved. Mm. Uh, I would have been in a better position. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Feel that little. But I, I, I have a different. You are very, opinion. very honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have a different opinion that even if I have, I think I even if I would have done like coding in my B Tech. Uh, even though I d- I don't think I would get that much exposure that I get uh, yeah, here in the uh, like yeah, the premium right. college. See, basically, if you want to go for research, then doing M Tech is uh, very helpful. Hmm. But then in just two years, you are not going to learn a lot of things. Then if you if your aim is to get into job, you should focus on programming. Right. Programming twelve hours a day, you will definitely get some job. You get into programming contests. Or the coding contest conducted mm-hmm. by companies, mm-hmm. you will definitely get a job. I have a question for you. Like, uh, like you are be teaching uh, mm-hmm. lots of many students. You are mm-hmm. guiding them for the gate. So, like, uh, you must have seen. You have done some analysis. Like, what kind of students should pursue for gate? And uh, like, many like uh, mm-hmm. he was also confused. Mm-hmm. I should prepare for the placements or go for the gate. So, what are <coughs> what is your perspective regarding this? Like. See, uh, generally B Tech colleges don't have good placements. Right. In that case, what you should be doing is focus on coding and then go to various platforms mm-hmm. and participate in coding contests. That is one way to get a job. Mm-hmm. And if you don't even, if you are not able to get any guidance in that part also, and if you don't have any placements, then you can go for placements. And then there are second kind of students who want to be teachers. Hmm. who want to uh, have their career in academic uh, side for them i suggest that they should go for mtech and then they should do their phd only for them mtech is recommended right so if hmm. you are good at coding and if you are having placements if you have a job then these two years is just a waste of time see because hmm. what i can tell you is even without masters also btech people are getting the same packages right so hmm. if they go for sd1 role uh for in every company there are levels you know right mm-hmm. like l1 l2 l3 sd1 and that level for a particular level the range is fixed mm-hmm. even if you are from mtech or B- btech that range is not going to change mm-hmm. so ultimately two years will be saved mm-hmm. so only mm-hmm. if you are yeah. if you are interested in teaching go for mtech and phd otherwise focus on programming especially dsa crack some companies join them and even you know dsa is very important uh, if you are a software developer at some point in your life you have to study dsa hmm. 
Right. Even if you join a service based company without DSA, yeah, yeah. that will be temporary. Like hmm. you will have to switch after three, four years or even five years, you will think about switching. Hmm. Then the DSA is very important. See, if something is definitely important in your life, why don't you do it in your BTEC days where you have time? See, learning hmm. DSA while you are working is not very easy. It will take a lot of time. But BTEC students should focus majorly on DSA and programming. Morning, yeah. Best life. I feel that going to US is the number one option. I think you two should try for H1B. But the problem is now uh, going to US using H1B is difficult because of the lottery system. Mm. Very mm. few people will get a chance to go there. One is you have to get a job there. Second is after getting a job, you have to get H1B. But if you go as a student, even now you can go for MS. So mm. my suggestion would be you just take a break. It, it will be just one year. You don't have to do two years MS. So one year mm. MS. Is yeah, one year MS is possible. So you go to MS. Now you have job experience. You will get hundreds of jobs there, not just one job. And then your salary will be at, at least around two crores. Okay. You can't earn that much here. See, why am I saying this mm. is you can you can actually retire early. See, why money is important in life. See, whatever money you are earning is sufficient for you and you are very happy and comfortable. But then is it enough to retire? Can you retire in 10 years? That is the question. Mm -hmm. But if you work in for 10 years in US, you will definitely retire. For example, Jay Bansal is there, right? So he he, he want to go to US now. He got AR2 in uh, GATE. He, got, he did his MTech from IIT Bombay. He's working for Google. But still he wants, he, he's not happy with his uh, whatever earning it is, his salary. Mm -hmm. And he wants to go to US. But it is not possible for him to get a job there. Right. He would have done it in, um, you know, MS. master's MS, hmm. right? So that is why you focus on programming. You focus on uh, getting a job in India. Work for one, two years. You will get experience. Then you go do MS in a US. Settle down there. Not settle down. Work for 10 years. If you work for 10 years, you can come back and retire. You don't have to work for money again. So again, you are not doing going to US to do MS. You are going to, uh, you are doing MS to go to US. I will repeat it again. You are not going to US, US, US to yeah. do MS. Right. You are doing MS to go to, to, US. Go to US. You understood right, that? Right, <laughs> yeah. MS is not important. Again, I'm saying yeah. master's is not important. MTech mm. is not important. MS is not important. But why are we going doing MS is because we want to go to US. That is easiest way. Mm. The rejection mm. rates are very less. If now you have to apply for H1B, you will not get a chance. Trust me, lottery is very difficult to win. So guys, what is your final suggestion or message to all the students who are watching the video? So all the students, I want to say that if you are in your B-Tech, if you are in your B-Tech, so you should primarily focus on placements or off-campus placement if your college is not good, if your college is not good. So you should be focusing on coding and getting placements. And uh, regarding gate, you should only go for gate if you're not getting any placement, anything. Uh, no hope is there in life, then only think for gate. If you are a little bit hopeful about your life, then only go for that uh, placements. Okay. So I have a YouTube channel regarding that as well. I will be guiding you so you can subscribe to that. I'll be posting free uh, DSA videos on that. So I want to help you. I want to help you being faster there so i have been top i will keep the dis yeah. uh, link in the description okay i will keep the link of the channel in description uh, he is having a uh, very good knowledge in dsa so he will be teaching everything for free so you can subscribe to his channel okay and also comment on this video about what courses you want to learn from these qualcomm engineers so they are very good at embedded systems i am asking them to do some course on embedded systems so you ask them what what you want to learn from them in the comments okay my message to the students are like yeah you should focus more on the uh, technology side and yeah you should do two things like if you are going for dsa yeah go for the dsa and besides that make at least one or two uh, projects that interest you so yeah if you are doing that much and applying for the companies yeah the times are now that like even like people are getting off campus offers so yeah it would definitely help you guys yeah, yeah this is what i feel yeah. The okay. same tip only and uh, prepare it from if you're in the second year third year and fourth year also like <laughs> it's not too late to prepare for the coding and you can prepare it you can like don't underestimate yourself lots of 
पीपल लाइक इन लाइक आई एम द कॉन्फिडेंट आई एम नॉट एबल टू आई एम नॉट एबल टू स्पीक इंग्लिश आई एम नॉट एबल टू राइट कोड आई डोंट नो आई ओनली नो हाउ टू टाइप हेलो वर्ल्ड स्टेटमेंट जस्ट को देर आर मल्टीपल साइट्स कोडिंग प्लेटफॉर्म्स कोड शेफ लीड कोड हैकर अर्थ हैकर रैंक लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स आर देयर यू कैन यू देर इज नो वे टू एस्केप देर इज नथिंग नो एक्सक्यूज टू से दैट देर इज नथिंग फॉर लाइक हाउ कैन वी प्रोसीड विद अ कोडिंग प्रिपरेशन एंड फॉर दोज हु आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द गेट ऑल द बेस्ट एंड इफ यू रियली वॉन्टेड टू गो फॉर द हायर स्टडीज और want uh, something the like same which he said where there is no hope of placements then go ahead with the gate so yeah. guys uh, there are laid offs going on so yeah. many people are jobless and <laughs> also some students who are searching for job so will you people be willing to uh, help them out so yeah. can yes, i put yes. your linkedin yeah. accounts in the description yeah yes, sure. sure i frequently post on linkedin so you can follow me and us on linkedin yeah yeah so guys uh, these people have uh, interesting posts on linkedin so you please follow them on linkedin okay so his dsa course is going to be free my dsa course will be for paid audience so you follow <laughs> his dsa course okay <laughs> yeah and then uh, i would like to thank uh, sayed for this uh, uh, in, in the podcast so he is the one who is directing the podcast with all the questions and all and i would like to thank all these people for coming over and doing this exciting video thank you so, thank much. You so much yeah, yeah.